Great. I'm back. Uh, do we have Ben? Yes, Ben, Nick, John. Okay, we're all here. Great. Well, um, so it, it, really quickly, uh, the close, we want to just hear from each of the groups with just a quick um, synopsis of what was discussed. And because I'm facilitating, I get to choose who goes first this time, and it's not me. Uh, John, do you want to go first? <laughs> <laughs> Jenna, we had actually decided in your absence that as the last one back, you got to go first. But yeah, uh, sure. Well, we, we've go. decided that for Paul before, and he hasn't had to do it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my group was talking about community unity and health, and uh, it was a really rich conversation. Uh, there was, I thought we had really good geographic uh, representation of the county. I feel like we had nine or 10 towns of Washington County there. And um, we started by talking about some of the challenges and the obstacles, and I'm just going to glance down at my notes a little bit to share. But uh, uh, you know, um, some of the issues are around sort of access now, and how are we accessing some of the healthcare needs that we have? It's not uh, as easy as it was, especially for some of the non-urgent needs that folks have um, in in uh, in accessing care. There was a fair amount of talk also about primary care and that we just, uh, that lack of capacity for primary care is, uh, is profound and significant. In and, and that affects, obviously people need primary care, but it also affects other, other uh, healthcare providers, mental health providers and others, because when you don't have primary care, the implications uh, spread uh, throughout the whole, the whole healthcare system. So uh, we, we talked uh, quite a bit about that. And, and just about the need right now in terms of mental health, uh, the isolation that people are feeling, the difficulty accessing um, services at this point, particularly in-person and residential care, uh, given that um, people are sort of reducing capacity to comply with safety protocols at a time when, frankly, the demand is uh, is increasing. So those are those are some real real challenges. Um, on to some more positive things, and and you know what's interesting when you're talking community unity and health is it was the the cover the conversation covered some some broad territory. Uh, we had a select board member talking about Zoom and the fact that they've had greater participation in their community, in their select board meetings, because they're now on Zoom and they're able to integrate people into those conversations and that that's actually, uh, they feel like that's been a positive outcome of this is that people are more uh, participatory in their, in their government. And um, we, uh, I would say, and I'm, this is the challenge of going first is I, I haven't had a chance to sort of make this a cohesive whole. But uh, another thing that we talked a fair bit about was sort of, I guess I would use the term matchmaking because uh, one of our participants really made that um, point. And we talked about it in a few different ways. One, in terms of the great work that happened in mutual aid groups uh, uh, around central Vermont and the matchmaking that happened there to meet urgent needs that folks have and that those meeting those needs through mutual aid was bridging some divides, getting people connected in ways they hadn't been before. And the organizations that were or coordinating that were getting connected to each other in a way that, that hasn't happened before. And actually Bonnie sort of provided the reflection at the end about how do we, those new connections that we've made, how do we perpetuate that? How do we sustain that? Those connections, those human connections are so valuable. Um, but, but when we think about that matchmaking, it's beyond just meeting immediate needs and how do we do it in a more sort of holistic way and in a longer time scale? And how do we do it not just on a town by town basis, but in more of a coordinated way in our state, in our, in our regions uh, as a whole is also a real point of, uh, point of discussion and reflection. There was a lot more to it. And thank goodness there was someone taking detailed notes because they'll, they'll do a better job of summarizing. But uh, I think I'll stop there. So thanks, Jenna. Great, thanks, John. Uh, Nick, do you wanna share the rethinking employment and supporting business recovery? Sure, yeah, so thanks, Jenna. Um, as you might imagine from that title, our, our uh, 
uh, conversation was broad and far reaching and uh, really fascinating. I, I think we, we wound up in some really interesting places and kept coming back to this idea of the pandemic as a really transformative moment. Um, we all agreed and have all been hearing that we're not, we don't want to recover back to where we were, um, but that this opportunity as traumatic in some ways and um, difficult as it is for many of us is, is in and of itself a real opportunity for transformational change. Um, so we, we followed a yeah, similar structure. Yeah, we started thinking about challenges, um, thinking about things that predate the pandemic, the ongoing need for workforce development and um, skills acquisition and, and shorter pipelines between schools and uh, workforce and, and connecting people to meaningful employment. Um, but then some of the things unique to the pandemic, the, the different impacts on different sectors, um, on different kinds of employees and the different availability of, of federal and, and state and local support. So we, from there, pretty quickly transitioned into thinking about what the, what the dream is. Um, and it's not that there's any one articulatable dream, but uh, what, what would we like to see in an ideal world? And I think that's where we really started to think about some of the strategies that we're seeing on the ground, some of the resources, there's clearly a, um, a great availability of folks in Washington County working really hard on this. Um, lots of great programs from uh, Vermont Tech and Capstone, um, continuing education, micro business grants, just really glancing at my bullet points here. So we heard about some of those and then we thought, thought through ways uh, we could move forward. Other like big innovative ideas. Um, it's clear that we're in this moment where we really need to seriously reconsider office space. And for many people, remote working may become the new normal. Um, and so what does that mean for our downtowns and our uh, brick and mortar retail? Um, so I will also sort of wrap up. I know we're short on time. I, it was a really amazing conversation. Really want to thank everybody for being a part of it. And um, yeah, I'll turn it over to you or Ben. Great. Thanks, Nick. Um, ben, uh, why don't you tell us about the housing and homelessness conversation? Great. Thanks, uh, everybody. I, I thought we, we had an excellent conversation. I'm, uh, I said this at the end of the, the conversation. I always feel like when I'm involved in a conversation having to do with housing and listening to people who live that work every day, they're, they're the smartest people in the world because they have to be, that the, con the challenges are just so complex uh, and so important. Uh, and it, it was a pretty inspiring conversation to hear about the good work that's being done um, and, and some good ideas to address some of the challenges. So, and the challenges are many. Uh, so some of the ones that we identified, uh, you know, just really starting off with a really great kind of setting of the uh, frame of the conversation was there's a 1% vacancy rate uh, in, in, in central Vermont, right? And so, or in Washington County. And, and, you know, there's just a real housing shortage, both in number of units, but then uh, units or housing opportunities that are appropriate for different kinds of people. Um, and so that's just obviously a, a huge challenge and it, it's brought, um, that's the reality because of the development costs, right? I mean, we, we have lots of regulation in the state often for very good reasons, but it adds to the cost of developing housing uh, and different types of housing. The market's really just not working. Uh, in addition to that, there's you know, the topography of our region is really challenging. When we've historically settled in downtowns and villages near the river and in a time of climate change, is that the best place to be? Uh, and we so value our working landscapes and wanna preserve that. And yet, how do you strike that balance between them? Another challenge we found was just kind of cultural. You know, that for example, here in Montpelier, there are so many folks that live in large older homes, um, but that might find themselves one or two people living in a five bedroom home. Uh, and yet there's a, there's a kind of cultural challenge to the idea of opening up your home to someone to either rent a room or share that house with. And you know, what's the kind of cultural component there that we can talk about as a community and really think about ways to address. And then you know, a, a, another kind of challenge is just understanding the complexity of the problem. You know, that there's just so many multifaceted issues when it comes to housing folks with unique needs um, that uh, 
to really try to get a comprehensive understanding of the challenge can be challenging. And then finally, sorry to focus so much on the challenges, but finally was really just the tension between various priorities uh, and values that Vermonters uh, in Washington County have, you know, where they care about climate change. Um, and so, but how does, you know, climate change legislation end up impacting the ability to build affordable housing? Or we care about historic preservation. What's the tension there between building new units and preserving the kind of historic settlement patterns? Um, and so, and then obviously competing economic challenges at the state house where there are obviously a lot of needs in this, in this, uh, in this time. But there were, you know, really I think some um, fascinating uh, and interesting solutions and strategies that are being employed in Washington County that I think um, are being replicated and could be replicated. And I think number one, what I heard was, it's all about relationships and collaboration. Um, you know, that we really have some fantastic leadership um, here in uh, Washington County uh, and they're collaborating, right? Where we've got Downstreet, we've got Capstone, uh, you know, folks like that working together to form comprehensive solutions. Another strategy that was suggested is really just education. Education and advocacy. Understanding that in many ways, um, affordable housing has been underfunded for a number of years in our state. And, you know, this has been a long-term challenge that we've seen coming, and we need to really recommit ourselves to solving it over the long term uh, and educating people about the complexity of the problem. And then finally, there's all kinds of opportunities for innovation, you know, that we're in this moment of crisis of this kind of crucible that is going to spark innovation. And that's things like accessory dwelling units, really taking a look at zoning policies that were developed in the 70s that do not meet the, the, the urgency of now. Right, uh, things like land banking for housing. We do a great job in this state of preserving land for agricultural use or for recreational use. What about preserving areas for housing? Um, so I think, you know, again, as John said, all this was captured in the copious notes that were taken, but I thought it was a, a challenging conversation, but also ultimately an inspiring one because there are good ideas and good leaders out there uh, that can move the work forward. So I just wanna thank everybody for the opportunity to have the conversation. Great, thanks, Ben. Um, so really quick summary of the arts, entertainment and recreation conversation. I, I always enjoy the opportunity to have these conversations because um, they're always incredibly creative when we think about the arts and, and entertainment. Um, and, and this was no exception. Um, certainly, I think you can all imagine some of the challenges we see with the arts and public entertainment and, and recreation today and getting together in, in public spaces. Um, also uh, shared some some challenges around you know virtual fatigue being online all the time um, communication things like that um, but I think the conversation really quickly shifted to a really beautiful vision for and I loved Commissioner Snyder articulated this at the end for how arts and recreation can really be a solution um, to what we're experiencing today and a way to bring people together to connect our communities and to think about the future in a creative way and so some vision points around every town in the county having groups working on um, on arts and recreation, uh, communities having a pride of ownership and a sense of place, um, using arts as a way to know each other better and arts as, as central to community life. Um, and certainly some really creative things going on today, um, but also some ideas around, you know, could we have some socially distance events that bring people together in new ways? Um, could we get a better sense of what locations are available to have gatherings and bring people together? Um, a lot of thoughts around like technical support, you know, web services for artists, um, uh, connecting uh, them to those resources, um, some ideas around enlisting AmeriCorps members and like an artist corps or a recreation corps to really um, support the work that's going on. But I'll just say that the biggest themes in the conversation, number one, this is really an opportunity to reimagine and re-engage um, around the arts and recreation and community. The arts and recreation as a solution, um, the opportunity to engage youth in, in the solution for the future, and the enormous power of having fun together and, and bringing breathing life back into our communities. So um, I think that that's really the, the summary of that conversation. I, I just will say briefly in closing and then turn it over to Josh to, to close. You know, we've had 10 of these conversations so far county to county and I will say everyone is different, um, but there's certainly, there's just some themes that we really see coming up over and over. And I think in the beginning, I would have been nervous that those themes would be kind of 
hopelessness or dismal um, outlook for the future. But I, in reality, we keep hearing the words innovation and creativity and partnership and and, and opportunity really as, as the biggest theme coming out of these. So, um, you know, I, uh, Paul Costello always says, Montpelier isn't gonna solve the problem. Washington DC isn't gonna solve the problem. You know, it's all about local leadership, community, um, and every Thursday night, I get to sit on these calls and look at these squares on my screen, and it's just heartening um, to see all of you um, putting yourselves on the line, uh, being here to think about the future and to think about how we can do some of that creative reimagining that we're all talking about. So really appreciate your participation, appreciate all that you're doing in your county and beyond. Um, and I have hope that we're going to get through this not only um, to recover, but also uh, in a to be stronger together uh, in Vermont. So thank you all. And uh, Josh, do you wanna um, Sure, close? I'll be real quick, Janet. Thank, um, thanks everyone for, for coming out. Thank the facilitators, you, you know, that's a tough job. All the uh, visiting team uh, members, you know, you've had a long day and to add this to it, really appreciate that. Um, you know, most of all, thank everyone um, from Washington County for, for coming out. Um, you know, participating in this this conversation, um, you know, putting yourself on the line, as Paul would say, and and um, you know, stepping up to to try to um, you know move forward, um, not not just recover, but um, move forward and, and use this opportunity. I've heard those same that same theme: opportunity, innovation, collaboration, um, every single time. And and so, if we can keep that positive. Um, view of this uh, and continue to uh, communicate with each other and, and move this forward, uh, we'll all be better off. And I know there'll be notes coming um, to everyone that participated and thank all VCRD and the agency staff and everyone that was involved. So really, yeah. thanks for coming out. Thanks, Josh. And I just, Nick, can you just, before everyone waves and says goodbye, I did want to just share what we will be doing in that follow up and I missed that opportunity. But Nick, do you want us to quickly share what people will hear in the next couple of weeks? Sure, yeah, so just to jump off what Josh said, there were, there are in fact notes. You guys, uh, I'm sure noticed a fastidious note taker in each session. Thanks again so much to all of those for helping us capture some of these uh, great ideas. Those usually take us uh, a week or so to compile. Um, we have to get them back and then tidy up. So look for an email tomorrow or soon with um, contact information for everyone who was on the visiting team in case there you have further questions or want to follow up on anything. We also will include a link to a survey if you had um, thoughts or reflections that you didn't get a chance to share during the session tonight. That survey is a really good way to capture those. Or if there are other people who maybe couldn't make it to the session um, who would be interested in providing some input to the governor's team that's another good resource there. So we'll have we'll send one quick follow up very soon, and then another in a couple of weeks with full notes. And um, thanks to our uh, media partners, for Orca Media, for helping record this. So there should even be some video recordings as well. So that I think is it. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much, everyone. Have a great evening, and um, we'll be in touch soon. Thanks, all. Be well. Be well. Bye.